Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to episode 29 of the Calypso Cigar Review Podcast. One I'm, short of 30. One short of 30. And I am your host, Brandon Luna, along with... Randy Rankin. And as always, we're at the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in the beautiful, lovely Richardson, Texas. Absolutely. And what are we smoking today, Randy? Smoking... This is a true cold uh, review for both of us. It's okay. the uh, Placencia Reserva Organica. So... That uh, has two words in it that sound kind of gross. Placencia sounds kind of like placenta. <laughs> yes, it does. And organica sounds kind of like orgasm. So it's a placenta orgasm. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it. I thought organica sounded more like organic than orgasm. orgasm but well, okay, yeah. To each their own. Yeah. So this is a, um, it is a, a Nicaraguan talk. Puro that is completely organic. So that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And what that means, basically, is that it is completely um 100% original certified organic cigar using pre-Columbian farming methods. Uh, they grow the tobacco in two regions in Nicaragua, um, and apparently the soil is very pristine. After harvesting the leaves and carefully curing them for three years, they produce this cigar. Supposedly mild to medium body. We'll find out. You've yeah. already cut and lit yours. What do you think I, so I far? Just, uh, the cold roll is wide open. Yeah. Uh, it has a, has a nice flavor on the tongue. I think I got the Toro. Oh, you think you smoked the Toro? I think I grabbed the Toro. I just decelled it. Son of a bitch. You're smoking the Toro. (laughs) I'm not going to fuck up twice. (laughs) (laughs) So you get the Corona, I get the Toro. I get screwed this time, just like you did with the Hoya de Nicaragua. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm smoking the first F bomb dropped. Oh, we've dropped F bombs in this show. Are you kidding me? I know we cost but i know if I'd yeah we dropped that bomb the only okay. bomb we haven't dropped in the show probably is the c word yeah we, we, we probably won't do that one. yeah we can't say can't <laughs> <laughs> no c word c word free zone right. but otherwise then we can yeah yeah but i had uh i'm having the corona then i'm having the toro we'll see okay it's gonna suck it's gonna be all your fault <laughs> <laughs> uh, i gotta get a moron thing, so. yeah hey, it's your moron. fault your fault you're the one that left it out jackass no, you used it to take the pictures. No, I didn't. I yeah, used did. I I used the this was the not open. This was sealed. Oh, okay. What? I didn't realize it. So we are pairing today with the ever famous Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark, which is a little harsh today to me. I don't yeah, know why. For some reason. Hmm. Yeah, I can't figure out why. That eh, might just because we I haven't drank in a while, so that might yeah. be it. I don't know. Oh, get this bullshit that happened today. So we go out to a. Uh, Trader Joe's. You mm-hmm. ever been to Trader Joe's? No, but I've heard of it. Okay, so Trader Joe's, if you guys don't know, if you don't have Trader Joe's, it's a hippie, it's a hippie store, basically. It's, they got yeah. all their own brand stuff there. It's a grocery store that has all this weird crap that you, you know no one eats, but people buy it because they think it's healthy, whatever. One of the big things Trader Joe's is famous for is something called Two Buck Chuck. Yeah. It's wine that is a blended wine by this guy who runs Trader Joe named Chuck Trader something. Trader Joe's. No, it's Chuck something. I forget well, that no, you name. You keep saying Trader's Joe. Trader's, it's, it's Trader, Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. What am I saying? Traders? You're going to Traders Tra- Joe. That traders, that Trader Joe, that <laughs> son of a bitch. He's a trader, and he's selling wine to people cheaply. You are a professional. Trader Joe. Yeah, Trader, trader Joe's. Trader Joe's? Joe's. Trader Foster Joe's. Yes. Okay. Well, anyway, it's a hippie store <laughs> that sells hippie shit. And uh, they have wine there for two ninety nine called Two Buck Chuck. Right. And it's supposedly really good for the money, right. like That's blended heard, wine. Yeah. I've heard so I went this. there the first time, picked up a couple of bottles. I got the Pinot Grigio and the, Bo- and the Beaujolais. Um, Pinot Grigio is for my wife. She okay. likes the white wines. And, Yuck. Uh, you know, hey, whatever. Okay. You know, to each his own, right? I guess. Like with cigars. <laughs> I guess. So uh, we got the Pinot Grigio. We got the Beaujolais for me. We head home. I mean, I packed them up in the little you know, little wine carrier thing that mm-hmm. you get from the grocery store with its yeah. own individual little yeah. things. And I put yeah. it in the back of the car so it wouldn't move. We get home. Get, I get it out. Get the bag out. Bottle drops. Break oh, shatters. I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Just all that. And of course, well, it wasn't mine, so that's good. Oh, that's <laughs> it was, it was an egregio. Egregio. <laughs> yeah, that broke. <laughs> well, I was like, eh, okay. I'm like, okay, good. You're not pissed. At least the red. <laughs> My right. first thing I said was, well, at least it wasn't the red wine. <laughs> She's like, you Thanks dick. A <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So that was my day today. <laughs> Go all the way to Trader Joe and. I thought you were going to tell me you get there and it was now four buck chuck or something like that. It wasn't two buck chuck anymore. It's two ninety nine chuck. Yeah. But it should be called three buck chuck. But whatever. Yeah. Uh, we have a customer here that was telling me about Trader's Joe. <laughs> that trader, <laughs> traitorous bastard Joe. And uh, he was telling me about two buck chuck and. Uh, he was oh! To- oh, did you just? <laughs> I ash? just totally ashed. You haven't even smoked it long enough to hurt the ash. <laughs> yeah, I'm a noob. <laughs> I don't even know what happened. So, You're a great broadcaster and an <laughs> excellent smoker. <laughs> a shitty smoker, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm, it's because I'm smoking the Toro. I know. Anyway, but, so, uh, it's got that uh, 
great taste on the tongue still. Yeah. On the um, lips. It's um, very it's very uh, woodsy. Yep. And uh, cedary and um, very it, it's mild. It's mild, mellowing out, but it's still got a lot of flavor. Yeah, it is mild. It is definitely a mild cigar, but it's it's a good mild cigar. I don't mind yeah. a mild cigar when it's got a lot of flavor. Yeah. And this has a it lot of flavor. It certainly does. Um, now, I have read... Um, and a couple the place we looked at for the info, of course, mm-hmm. was also reviews. So I, I spec'd it. I'm like, damn it, I didn't want to read that. It said it was kind of mild in one note, but we'll see. I mean, I don't think it's one note. I already, it's already, already changed the note. It went from yeah. buttery to cedar yeah. for me yeah. already. So, and, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's not one note, hmm. not at all. It's good though. It's yeah. So today was a big day for our family. We had the uh, first day of kindergarten and the first day of high school for my kiddos. Ooh, two milestones. Yeah, two milestones. So I got the day off of work for that. Because I knew it was going to be an emotional roller coaster for my wife, and I'd have to be there to hug her and stuff. So, to be the man for a change. To be the man, yeah. To be the man for a change, yeah, exactly. Like, what are you crying about? Shut up, get in the car. That's what you do when, you, <laughs> when you're Al Bundy, basically. Yeah. All right. No, but it was, yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was fun. It was a cluster bomb, you know, just getting mm-hmm. there, all the parents, mm-hmm. you know, trying to get there, and just a, it was a freaking just horrible situation. It was basically four hours of my day was at the schools right. trying to get them in and out of the damn schools. Okay, I have a rant. Okay. A Randy rant. A Randy rant. Someone to sponsor that. Randy's okay. rant. Anyway, okay, I get it. You people that have kids, I get it. You love your kids. If I had kids, I would love my kids too. And that's all the time we have today for Randy's rant. <laughs> <laughs> but do we have to see everybody's kids' Facebook? I mean, parents taking Facebook pictures or pictures for Facebook of their kids on the first day of school? Yes. My wall is bombed with kid <laughs> pictures i don't care yeah but it's all the other people that are friends with us the family know, members and but stuff that you care. have single for or you have parent uh, childless friends as well they don't want to see that crap Aww. Wah, wah, wah. ah you big baby shut up <laughs> just don't look at your i already face have like. to put up a school zone so i don't have to look at your <laughs> this is me on her first her first day of school <laughs> i don't care <laughs> Nobody posted me when I went to school. Yeah, there wasn't Facebook then, douche. I don't, my parents wouldn't have done it anyway. They would have thought it was stupid. You know what's, what's funny about Facebook is that Facebook is like, for the longest time, it was like, oh, kids and their Facebook and college students and Facebook. That's and now parents. no kids are on Facebook. <laughs> my kid's like, oh, okay, you're old enough now. We'll let you get a Facebook. Because for a while she was asking, like, I want to be on Facebook. I want to be on Facebook. I want to be on Facebook. Now she's 14. It's like, okay, we'll go ahead and let you get one. She's like, Facebook? That's for losers. Nobody's on Facebook. I'm like, <laughs> I point to my wife. I'm laughing at her. It's like, what? At? You're on Facebook, too. I'm like, I'm on Facebook for business purposes. I'm there to promote my photography and my podcast. That's it. You know, it's just. <laughs> I I like, I have fun on Facebook, but I don't have fun the way most people have fun. I mean, I don't play those Zynga games. I don't do any of the games. If you, you know, send me I'm, an invite to a game, I'm going to unfriend you. Yeah. <laughs> just hate I, that shit. I, I mean, at the beginning, I, I fell into that trap and. I played Farmville for about three weeks, mm-hmm. no. and I wished I never had because people that remembered when I played Farmville yeah. still hit me with the requests, even though I've said, don't send me any requests. They still send them because they remember that I used to play. Nah. Uh, yeah, no, but, I, don't, I don't do any of the doofus games. But, uh, on there you know, I like shit. to, I'll, I'll get a funny thought, I'll post it. If, I, if somebody has a funny thought, I'll, I'll comment on it. Uh, yeah. I just like stuff, and occasionally, if I want to comment, I'll comment. I comment. That's what my wife gets pissed about too. She's like, "Well, you comment on all your cigar buddy stuff." I'm like, "Well, that's stuff I'm interested in. You know? <laughs> Not interested in the the thing you reposted that someone else thought was funny that what I didn't think was funny." So, ah. I get this, and then and people just can drive you nuts sometimes. Yeah, they can. Uh, I was watching an episode of The Office, and Michael had this hilarious line, and I'll tell the joke because it's just a great joke. They're at a Christmas party, and he says, uh, "I've created a new drink." It's vodka and orange juice. I call it an orange vodjuska. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I put it in quotes and even put Michael Scott below so people knew this was a quote from somebody. Mm-hmm. I got at least 40 people telling me that that is a screwdriver. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Me. <laughs> yes, you know that's a screwdriver, man. You didn't make that up. <laughs> yes, and you are an idiot. <laughs> so funny. Oh, wow. People are like that on Facebook, are, man. Though, man. <laughs> they just, you know, and what I love it is when people. This is what kills me on Facebook. It's like there needs to be an awe button on Facebook instead of a like button because yeah. a lot of people post like. 
oh, I just want to let you guys know my dad's in the hospital in a coma, and you know, I just want prayers to go out. There's like 38 likes. I'm yeah, like, you, you don't want to put like. Yeah, why do you like that? That's a horrible thing to like. But I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. You know, go under. Oh, you have to type that. Uh, oh, I'll pray for you. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I do that because I, I, I think that like, means like. more than I like your pain. <laughs> I like the fact that your dad's in a coma because I'm a dickhead. You yeah, know, that's just I horrible. Understand. I understand. There used to be an awe button <clears throat> or yeah. like a sympathy, like a sympathy button. Sympathy. Oh, why the hell isn't there a dislike button? <laughs> there needs to be a dislike. That's button, ridiculous. Yeah. And that's been going around for years that there should be a dislike button. Yeah, but then everybody would get. You know, people are just oh, busy on the internet off. anyway. Every there'd be more dislikes than likes. They'd get pissed off and start fights. Yeah. It would so, be Family like, members you didn't like my post. Family members disliking each other in <laughs> in real life because they disliked a post that yeah. was on Facebook about his kid getting a haircut. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> dislike. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. Could so, you uh, not like his haircut? It looks like Justin Bieber on crack. He's a dick. <laughs> I hate your kid. <laughs> Just <laughs> does it so and so look cute? Dislike. <laughs> <laughs> no, they look like shit. You're an idiot. <laughs> or do you cut their hair? <laughs> The bowl cut went out in the two, in the 1900s or some shit. <laughs> yeah, there would just yeah. be a hateful place. Yeah, it would be. Just call it hate book and dislike everything. That's a that's million dollar idea. Let's make sh- hate book. Let's do hate book. <laughs> Damn it. Haters going to hate. release these things the... <laughs> out on the air. Hate book. Uh, hate book. <laughs> Haters going to hate. I'm surprised they didn't do that in like idiocracy or something. <laughs> I know, right? Great. <laughs> I think Facebook was just getting started when that movie yeah. came out. So they I even... love those. De- you ever seen those? You know those motivational posters? They yeah. have the demotivational ones. Have you yeah. seen those? Oh, those yeah, are those great. are great, too. I love those. If I ever had an, if I ever got in a situation where I had an office, I would have a ton of those on my wall. Oh, yeah, they're great. Like, uh, you got to take those down. Those are, uh, like, ah, shut up. <laughs> Get out of my office. <laughs> You're creating a negative vibe in the workplace. Creating a hilarious vibe. Get out of my office. <laughs> Michael Scott would appreciate it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. The internet's a crazy place full of people so, that just have too way too much time on their hands. Yeah, so that, that's my rant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my rant was interspersed with yours. It was our rant. <laughs> About the stupidity to, of Facebook. Uh, yeah. But uh, speaking of Facebook, we are on Twitter. Yes, we are. And if you will follow and us and like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll try not to dislike any of your posts (laughs) and if you comment on any forum we will or such as youtube as well Mm -hmm. we will give you a shout out on the show correct and we will follow you if you follow us on twitter yep as always so what do you think so far of the uh so far i'm a fan placencia i'm a fan i don't like the name i know it's nestor placencia's name but it's a a hard name to spell hard to spell to say you know, hardly her name to spell is uh, La Polina, apparently. I spelled yeah, it wrong that on all freaking that? Yeah. I could have sworn I texted you, but I looked and I didn't text no. you. But I, I'm, I, I think I might have it. been typing one and then you sent in a text and I yeah. deleted and went to the next text. Uh, and that's whatever. What I'm a but thanks for to Kirk for pointing it out. He didn't. No, it wasn't Kirk. It was somebody else. Some guy named Big Brown Jim or something. I don't know. Oh, I it, it wasn't was his name. Big Brown Jim. <laughs> <laughs> something else. Brown <laughs> Jim. <laughs> Who the hell? <laughs> Big, Big Brown, Brown Jim. <laughs> I don't know the guy's name. <laughs> the big green giant, maybe. I can understand that. The big brown giant. I don't know what the guy's name was. I thought was. it was Kirk, no? No, it wasn't Kirk. It was somebody else just said Paulina with a question mark. I'm like, okay. Paulina. Oh, yeah, I misspelled it. Mm. Doy. <laughs> La but Paulina. That's a good cigar, though, that La but, uh, Paulina. Not, yeah, it was. I have not had a bad one yet. I like those. So what do you think of this? This is good. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of getting a little stronger on me mm-hmm. at the end of the first third here for me. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. So far, I would recommend it. That's definitely, for sure. Definitely. How do you think it's pairing with the uh, makers? I think it's a good blend. Mm-hmm. It's uh, we must say that this cigar is made by Ventura. Is a uh, carried by Ventura Cigars. That's the mm-hmm. the company that distributes the cigar. All righty. And um, we have it in what side? But there's like Toro, we Busto, Toro, Churchill, Corona. Busto, Corona. It comes in a Churchill. Yeah. Oh. Must be a big Churchill because that box was big. It was yeah. a lot bigger than the other boxes. So well, Churchill know. was a big guy, big cigar. That's true. Well, Churchills typically are not. Seven they're inches. like seven by forty-eight, 48 or fifty-two 50, or something. Or, between yeah. forty-eight and fifty-two. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But now they're seven by seventy. Yeah. Freaking ridiculous well, size cigars. What's well, your What's your take on that? The whole large ring gauge I just, thing. I'm, I like to Jorge Blanco's. Comment on yeah, the Jose Blanco's comment. <laughs> Jose Blanco, Jorge, just, just Jorge, Jorge. make a ten by a hundred and call it enough. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know because I don't enjoy them. Yeah. So therefore, I don't really have an opinion on them. I yeah. don't. We're gonna review one eventually. I'm gonna make you review a seven by seven. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. I smoked that inch 
Yeah, you're going to smoke a seven That you gave me. Yep. There was a joke there, but we won't. <laughs> <laughs> you liked that inch. No, I did you? not like the inch at all. <laughs> I must say, just for the record, it's more than an inch. <laughs> that would be oh, bad. yeah, it's seven by 77. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, Solid. Not, not that. Oh, no, no, no. no the cigar. Yeah. No, that was the one I gave you was the, uh, the six by 62, I think. I didn't even give you the biggest one. They have oh. a, 64 was the biggest they were making. Now they have a 7 by 70 mm. But I will give props to EP Carrillo because they are one of the few brands out there that makes those larger ring gauge, and they blend it for the larger ring gauge. So they actually do have flavor. Yeah. Now, it's not complex, but it is. Right. there's a lot of flavor in those cigars. Mm-hmm. Uh, Asylum also does that. They blend for the larger ring gauge, and they have a 7 by 70s and stuff that supposedly have a lot of flavor. I haven't tried one of those yet, nor do I really have a, a desire to. But if you send me one, I'll smoke it, whatever. There you go. Yeah. Oh, and we also must mention that we do bomb our listeners from time to time. Mm -hmm. We sent out a couple bombs last week or week before last. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're also willing to be bombed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, if you guys want us to review anything, if there's something that um, that we haven't reviewed yet and you really want us to review it, then definitely um, send it over and we'll let you you send it to us and then we'll smoke it. We'll give it a shout out and we will do a review on it, even if we don't carry it here in the store. We we did review the Winwood, which, uh, oh, we must uh, say about the Winwood because we didn't really know what it was. Mm -hmm. We did a a mini-sode on the Winwood and uh, we did mention that it was very, uh, had a lot of ammonia in it and Uh it was very acrid and that was because it was a fresh roll and we didn't know that at the time. So with that in mind, that cigar, um, when you, if you know anything about fresh rolled cigars, they definitely should be smoked right when they're rolled or you wait about six months yeah. because they, they're going to have a sick period where they just they have a lot of ammonia. I'll have to check with Kurt and see if he's has smoked any that have rested. Yeah. I've heard the other Winwoods, the non-fresh uh-huh. rolls, are good cigars. But this okay. one, it's, I mean, I guess now the B&M owner's probably getting them fresh and smoking them right away. So that's probably why he right, likes, he them, likes them. Versus, yeah. you know, the one we got sent was probably right at that start of the sick point. Right. Because be. if you notice, the first third was fine. It was just yeah, really mild. And then it just got burr, yep. turned into that smoking freaking... Drano or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. What Drano? What's that with the bald guy? Mr. Clean. Yeah, smoking Mr. Clean, basically. It's like yeah. dipped in Mr. Clean. Yep. It was weird. Mm-hmm. But now we know. The more you know. Rainbow. Ding. Remember those? Okay, this is turning into almost a gay show. <laughs> this is not good. You, you mentioned remember that? Rainbows? The more you yeah, know. I know. Yeah, oh, that's right. On the NBC shit. thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was always some, like, <laughs> some TV star talking about something stupid for kids or whatever. Right. <laughs> Don't cross the street when you're not supposed to, or, you'll ha- or this will happen to you. And they show like a graphic picture of some kid getting hit by a car, and it's Matthew Perry going, the more you know. <laughs> You don't remember I that? liked it when they started doing the funny ones on NBC. This was right about the time The Office started coming on. They had funny ones? Yeah, they had funny ones that were kind of sarcastic. Uh, you know, like they'd have like Jim and Pam talking about, uh, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, work, we're we're getting place at ethics and stuff. It was funny. Yeah. Well, we're getting back to the uh, pretty much the end of the first third here. So we're going to take a little break and we'll be right back with the rest of the Placencia Reserva Organica. All right, and we are back for the second third of the Organica Reserva. <laughs> you just said it like <laughs> the Placencia Reserva, Reserva Organica. Organica, the Placenta Reserve, the organic Placenta Reserve. <laughs> yeah, the hippie hippie Placenta <laughs> Reserve. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, so second it, third, it, yeah, change up a little bit. A little I, bit. I definitely don't think it's one note. Definitely it has, not a one it's note. It's gotten cigar. a little bolder. It's not. It's still medium. Mm-hmm. I would say it's it's moved into the medium range. More it's pepper on the retro hail, though. Yeah, more pepper on the retro hail. And I cannot not ash this on myself. I've ashed myself twice now with this damn cigar. And now it's all over the floor. Oh, shut up! And Pedro doesn't work here in the week anymore. No. <laughs> so, who do you think gets to clean that up? You. Thanks. Oh, you don't even work right now. Matt gets to clean it up. Yay! <laughs> and we'd like to thank Matt for providing the cigars Absolutely. today. So I'll clean it up instead of Matt. Because <laughs> that's my thank you to him. Right. And uh, we are at the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. You can find us on Potomatic, Spreaker, YouTube, iTunes. And am I forgetting anything? Oh, and you can follow us on Twitter. Yep. And like on Facebook. On Facebook. Yes, Any comments sir. we receive, we will uh, send you a shout out. All right, and it's getting that time, you know, for the uh, oh. the Esteban Carreras Creature Feature. So we're going to go ahead and do the Esteban Carreras Creature Feature. And today we have a doozy. <laughs> so um, this this should be a fun one, I think. Um, if you like werewolf movies, stand by. 
Esteban Carreras Creature Feature. Today's Creature Feature is a movie called Big Bad Wolf. Yep. Came out, what, 06? I, I say the movie lightly. <laughs> the term movie lightly, because it, uh, it was really not so much a movie. The uh, famous people in this movie were, uh, well, Clint Howard has a cameo. Yep. Uh, David Naughton, and we'll talk about him in a little bit, has a cameo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know any of the other actors. Robin Sidney is a, an actress. She's in a lot of B movies that I've seen. This is from 2006. Yeah. And uh, um, the big star for me, the one that I knew from it, was Richard Tyson. Mm-hmm. And um, Richard Tyson was kind of big in the in the 2000s, early 2000s, um, late 90s, I guess. Uh, he was that um, guy that was either – he was either always a bad guy – or he was the the love interest, so that's kind of the roles that he played. He was either a bad he was he was always the bad boy role, right, right. And that was kind of where he got his um, his start, I guess, and that's what he was known for. So he had some movies. Let's go back in his little uh, IMDb revisionist here. Let's go back and see here. For IMDb, this guy's big movies back in the day. Uh, the first one I remember seeing him in was Three O'clock High. Remember mm-hmm, that movie mm-hmm. with Casey Schmasco? It was one of those. Uh, high school movies. It was basically a high school version of uh, High Noon, right? Uh, with Casey Schmasco as the nerdy kid, and Richard Tyson's the guy that's going to kick his ass at three o'clock, and yeah. it's kind of an anti-bully thing. And um, you know, from there he went on to do uh, Kindergarten Cop, where he was the bad guy in that. Yep. And uh, he was on Moonlighting um, for an episode, so and that's kind of cool. And he was all then he was the love interest in Two Moon Junction, which was one oh, of yeah. those Zalman King sex yeah. movies that everybody was watching in the right. you know late eighties. Yeah. Uh, so he was the the sexy guy in that, um, which is weird to me because he's a funky looking dude. I mean, he he's looks, very weird looking. <clears throat> he looks like he has like a lion. He's kind of well cast as yeah. far as as the, he definitely is. I could definitely see him as a werewolf. Yeah, yeah. So bad guy. He was Red Shoe Diaries, another one of those sexy movie sexy things. Movies, yeah. um, he was in the Babe. The Babe. Yeah. Who did he play in the Babe? Guy Bush. Okay. Where did uh, that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know who Guy Bush is. Yep. So he's you know he's had you know he's had a, a decent. Um, yeah, he was in Kingpin also. Um, he's had some oh, decent that's right. movies. He was in Kingpin. There's something about Mary. He was devec- uh, Detective uh, yep. Curvoy or, or yep. Curvoy. And um, so yeah, he's had you know he's had some had, decent had movies. Decent run. Yeah. Uh, he was in um, Black Hawk Down, and Me Myself and Irene. So he must be a Farley. You know, Farley Brothers use a lot of the same actors. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So, but one thing I remembered, the only thing I remembered about Richard Tyson was he to me was the epitome of a douchebag. He yeah. always played. <laughs> He looked like a douchebag. He acted like a douchebag. They didn't use that word back then, mm-hmm. but it, that That's, was the douchebag. Right. Because right. you know, douchebags through the air, you had like, you know, the 80s douchebag, which was the guy that dressed all in black mm-hmm. and everything in his house was black lacquer. Yeah. And he had a you know, pencil thin porno mustache. Then you had the 90s douchebag, which Richard Tyson is that guy. Yeah. And you have the 2000 douchebag, which is everybody from um, that show that was that stupid show that everybody likes on TV that's horrible with Snooky. Oh, Jersey Shore. Yeah, yeah they're the douche. current douchebags. Yeah, so douche. he was the '90s douchebag to me. Yeah. And um, the '90s douchebag was the guy that uh, would brag about how much money he made in his car and yep, and yeah, you know, that dressed you know in the best clothes. dressed impeccably. Yeah, right, he was yeah. that. He was the epitome of that yeah. in um, in Kindergarten Cop because he had all the really nice suits with right. the ponytail, and he's like, "I'm the bad guy." Ugh. You know, he just <laughs> was the epitome. He was douchebag. If you could have a like. A building size, like Empire State Building size mm-hmm. douchebag, it would be made of Richard Tyson. Yeah. That was basically I mean, yep. how I would look at him. Well, so to the story, oh, to the story. You know, this movie actually tried to be a decent movie, unlike Pranaconda and uh, what's the Two Headed Shark Attack. I mean, yeah. those were low budget. This one had a decent sized budget on it. You this was tell. definitely bigger than Two Headed Shit Attack yeah. and Pranaconda, but it was and, uh, Two Headed Shit Attack. That's what I call it now. <laughs> okay. Only moderately better. You know, I yeah. have a theory about this movie. You okay. say you say your piece first, and I'll okay. tell you my theory. Uh, Let's get into the plot. We'll give people a notice. I think they were. Plot. Yeah, I think they were trying to be sarcastic a little bit with this yeah. movie. Well, it's it's listed as a it's listed as a comedy horror. Okay, so and that's what they that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, but it's about this. Uh, this uh, group of kids that are going to go out in the woods, you mm-hmm. know, duh. Uh, the, the main kid is uh, Richard Tyson's stepson. Yeah, he's a mousy little kid. And, uh, you know, Richard Tyson bullies him and mm-hmm. uh, bullies the mom. And they're going to go out in the woods and daddy's going to go out on a business trip. Yeah. So you already, the foreshadowing was obvious right from yeah, the yeah, get-go. Yeah. So we're not, spo- this is not a spoiler alert. You the, watch two minutes of this movie, you figure it out. All the the movie should have been called My Stepfather is a Werewolf. That's that basically would have, would have been the title of the So movie. he knows that they're going out to the cabin, so of course he's going to go out there and wreak some havoc on these bad teenagers. Yep. 
And, uh, you know, it starts with Clint Howard was the typical, I wouldn't go up there if I were you guys. You know, the warning guy in yeah. every horror movie. Yeah. And, uh, the creepy uh, warning guy. They always have to have a creepy guy that warns, warns them not to do something, and they don't right. believe him because he's just a creepy guy. Because he's creepy. And, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I thought it was funny because uh, he's like, I wouldn't go there if I were you. And then, but if you're willing, it's 15 miles back. You take a ride. Right, you told him exactly <laughs> yeah. where to freaking go. <laughs> and I was waiting for that moment in the movie later where the yeah. werewolf and him, he's like, you know, hey, you know, I Help sent you some kids. Right. You going to give me something? And, I was like, <laughs> and uh, you know, of course, uh, David Naughton shows up as the cop after we yeah. went to the first slaughter. There's a funny uh, slaughter scene we have to mention. Yeah. Uh, and for those who don't know who David Naughton is, he was, of course, an American werewolf in London. Yep. He one of his, uh, he was a four time one hit wonder. Yeah. He had one hit TV show, one hit movie, one hit record, and one hit commercial series. <laughs> yeah. And has done nothing since. Except for Big Bad Wolf. Big, Big Bad Wolf. <laughs> but a little irony there to have him in a werewolf movie. Yeah, that I think that's why of, they hired yeah, him. Obviously. Uh, but, uh, there's a scene, you know, there's the, the virgin in the group, but this one wasn't the typical virgin in the group where the virgin, uh, winds up becoming the, the heroine of the movie because of her virginity. This one kind of flaunts her virginity to keep her boyfriend at bay, you know, and kind of lead him by the nose hairs. Yeah. Uh, but she'll do, she'll do oral, but she won't, you know, he can't uh, get to the Holy of Holies. Yeah. Well, the werewolf does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The werewolf likes to fuck in this movie. He, he is talks. a very fucky werewolf. And he talks. <laughs> he talks, yeah. He talks and he fucks. So apparently when this guy becomes a werewolf, he turns into Freddy Krueger because that's basically yeah. who he is. Yeah. He's, he's taunting him with the one-liners and the yeah. stuff, and that it's just bad. Here's my theory on the movie. I'm going to give you my theory of the movie. I think this movie was originally a, an after-school special. I think they had the budget for an after-school special. They started filming an after-school after school special about a kid who's very meek and he's trying to be he's trying to be a better kid. He's trying to help his mom because she's in an abusive relationship and he's getting abused and he's trying to be you know this uh, he's trying to get in with the cool kids yeah. Yeah. by you know he's trying to get into fraternity that his dad was in. His dad passed away, so it's his way of getting closer to his dad. Yeah. And you know he goes out to this uh, shack and you know it just turns wrong from him and you know mm -hmm. then he, he he for some reason mm -hmm. this meek little kid hooks up with this uh hot biker chick yeah. with shit in her face well i don't think she was all that well hot, but i know was, but she was cool and in a million chick. years yeah. she would never even consider this mm -mm. guy mm -mm. as a fuck buddy it just wouldn't happen no. in any, any kind of stretch no. of the imagination but i i think this was a, a an after school special mm -hmm. about herpes in that she gives him herpes, and then she gives his stepfather herpes, and everybody has herpes and don't have sex because you'll get herpes. But then they said, well... Then they, the obvious occurred, and they said, no, let's turn it into a werewolf They said, movie. well, no one watches after-school <laughs> movies anymore. What can we do to this Unless to make Scott it into Bayo's something? In because, I mean, it looks like an after-school special. Right. Like, most of the shots are during the daytime. There's, like, a that 90s soft filter on everything. Oh, yeah. It all looks like it was shot on soap opera sets. It looks like an after-school special yeah. with extreme gore and tits yeah. and a lot right. of bestiality. Right. So it's just <laughs> really weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's like this paradigm shift in tone, uh -huh. you know. And, and if you hadn't seen the first scene in the movie, which of course is the obligatory "someone has to die" scene, right? You know, where the guys are hunting and the yeah. werewolf hunts him down and rips the guy's arm off and I'm, I rips his leg off. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure he fucks his leg because the wolf, the wolf in that fucks everything, <laughs> and then beats him to death with his leg or something. I yeah. don't know. So if you didn't have that scene, you'd think this is an after-school special until right. the werewolf thing happens, right. you know. But it's just a ridiculously put together thing that uh -huh. doesn't make. And it's weird because the violence is really violent. You know, right. it's like this really happy-go-lucky, bright movie, and then there's these extreme gore, someone getting his head ripped in half, and, and every time the werewolf has to kill somebody that's a girl, he has to rip their clothes off and fondle them first. It's, right. you know, it's just like the <laughs> most sexualized werewolf movie ever it's made. It's crazy. Now, the, the chick that, that uh, out in the woods looks naked, Yeah, her name's Robin Sidney, okay. and she looked horrible in that movie. I've yeah. seen her in a bunch of stuff, uh, and she's a very pretty girl. And what... What did they do with her makeup? She looked hideous in that movie. But uh, she's, she gets naked in a lot of movies. And uh, she was in a movie called The Lost. And it's one of the most disturbing endings of a movie ever. I'm not going to give it away, but it's a very intense movie. And the ending is just will blow you away. If you ever get a chance to see The Lost okay. with, with, with Robin Sidney in it, it's great. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. But yeah, so this is just a weird, it's a weird movie because it's got that, you know, paradigm shift in plot. Um, yeah. And uh, Richard Tyson's basically, like I said, he's the biggest douche. But, you know, they, they say certain actors light up the screen. It's like, yeah. oh, that person lights up right. the screen. Well, he douches up the screen. Right. And he douches the screen in so much douchery that this is just one big douche fest. You know, it's, it's <laughs> between him and the kids that get killed in the beginning, it's a giant douche fest. Yeah. And there's one shining nice guy 
uh-huh. who you still never believe the girl's going to hook up with him, even though he right. oh he rides a bike, so now he's cool. Like yeah. really, he rode a bike. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big deal. He's he did it for her though. It's not like he got a tattoo. <laughs> Just I don't know. He did it for her. And they what, they tried um, to kill the wolf with the sterling silver knives. Like, yeah. really? <laughs> really? <laughs> God. Yes, this wolf could talk. and Yeah, he talks. He spouts off some decent one-liners. Liners, like, yeah. this is a, the virgin thing. Yeah, you you fucked my virgin girlfriend. <laughs> she ain't no more. Vir- she ain't no virgin anymore. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely a thumbs down movie. <laughs> If, if you want to see a werewolf movie fun, with some boobs, then yeah, yeah you might watch it with a with a giggle or two. I mean, yeah, you know. And the, the what's funny about it is that it's supposed to be a. I guess the horror comedy part of it is that the werewolf does all the right. He does the little pigs, little pigs, let me in. You know, yeah. Line, and mm-hmm. uh, his lines are pretty funny. But uh, the rest of the stuff in the movie that's supposed to be funny is just not not mm-hmm. really funny. So no, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Next. It was it was entertaining, but right. um, yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> wasn't great. I wouldn't watch it again. I would say it's a step above Two Headed Shit Attack and, uh, and Piranaconda, but um, still not still something not, I would not, watch not again. Not gonna watch it again. <laughs> but if you want to see Richard Tyson in something, and if you're a Richard Tyson fan out there, ladies, then you might want to see Big Bad Wolf. Or if you uh, like boobs, and yep. there's quite a few of them in this movie. Yeah, there are. Yep, and a lot of oral. <laughs> a lot of oral. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, werewolves like oral. Apparently so. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, they are half man. Yeah, so they are. Yeah. That half wants the oral. Yeah. <laughs> the other half wants to kill him right after, right. which he does pretty regular yeah, in the movie. Does. Yeah, <laughs> God. pretty crazy. Yeah. Oh, oh man. man. Well, that's another creature feature. Yeah, that ends our uh, daily uh, Esteban Carreras creature feature. And once again, I thank them for making us watch these bad movies. But we kind of put that on ourselves, didn't we? <laughs> we kind of did. That was our creativity. Yeah. So that work. ends today's creature feature. Esteban Carrera Cigars. Super premium cigars at a great price. They're scary good. God, that movie. (laughs) Oh, man. So what do you think of the uh, placenta? It's got a lot of... (laughs) The placenta. It's got a lot of flavor. I mean, I'm just really liking it. Um, The cedar's still pretty bold Mm -hmm. as far as, you know, dominating the cigar, but in a good way. This Corona is putting off a ton of smoke. The Toro is too. Yeah. yeah, big time. I mean, this room's smoking. It's just two of us in here smoking. Mine went out, so I had to do the relight. But uh, I did. Mine do went the, out uh, during the creature feed. I did too. the purge, so it still tastes good. Mm-hmm. I hate that I had to do that, but yeah, mega smoke coming out of this thing. I'm talking like Liga grade smoke. They always talk about Ligas have a lot of smoke coming out of them. This one's putting out a good amount of smoke too. Yeah. You know, I think the. Uh, the Tempest puts out a crap load of smoke, too. I haven't smoked that? one of those in a long time. I had my time. first one in about six months the other day. I found a couple um, at the bottom of my barrel there, so I'm going to probably hold on to those. But, yeah, um, they I can't think. The Legas really are the only ones that really, I mean, they're just like too much smoke. You mm-hmm. know, it's like even yeah. that Nika Rustica we have, which is an yeah. Liga product, that thing was just like, it was yeah. like a cloud in here. Mm-hmm. It was like a storm cloud. You could expect lightning and shit to come out of that right. thing when we were smoking it. It's alive. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was ridiculous. But, you know, I don't know how they do that. Whatever they're doing, they, they like to do it. And I guess if you like that kind of thing, it's cool. Absolutely. Definitely annoying to people if you go somewhere and smoke one yeah. of those, I would think. <laughs> like, oh, who started a fire in here? Just yep. like, oh, you can't even see. But, um, so you watch any movies lately besides Big Bad Wolf? Yes. What'd you watch? Oh, We're, We're the, the Millers. Millers. Yeah, Did we watched watch We're it? the Millers. Is yeah. that freaking hilarious? That was pretty darn funny, movie. man. Yeah. I love that ending thing. The trick they played on Jennifer Aniston, don't want to ruin it for anybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. The, the bloopers I actually, great. I actually got a little teary in a, in a funny way. I was like wiping tears. I was laughing so hard at that. Yeah. Because she handled it perfectly. She did, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah the bloopers are great. The bloopers They're are funnier great. than the rest of the movie, but the movie is funny. Oh, the movie's got a lot of funny parts mm-hmm. in it. Uh, Ed Helms. What a dick. <laughs> yeah. He is a freaking dick in that movie. He is a straight up asshole in that yeah, movie. Yeah, but uh no, a thumbs up on where the Millers are. Absolutely. Yeah, that was funny. I was I was not expecting as much as I as I laughed in that. I, I thought a lot of it was gonna be in the trailers. So that's gonna mm-hmm. be one of those comedies where it's ninety percent in the trailers. But yeah, it was a pretty funny through and through. And Aniston's strip dance scene was awesome. She looks pretty good. She's getting a little she looks a little thick. She wasn't she didn't have much of a waist, but uh, uh she still looks she, good. Uh, 
She had a little pooch. Well, she, well, she, well she's 43. Yeah, I know. You can have a little just pooch. Saying, you couldn't do that when you but were 20. But it wasn't, <laughs> I mean, come on, yeah, But it wasn't that bad a pooch. I mean, it's No, no, not she bad. looked good. I mean, she, she looked good. She still has a pretty yeah. flat stomach. It's just yeah. a little tiny bit. I but, wouldn't uh, throw her out of bed. We'll say that. She was still she still looked good. There's more room on the floor. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you're going to be that way about it. You freaking werewolf. That ass. God. <laughs> that, her ass. Her ass is great. I hope it was her ass, but yeah. That's her ass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have to say a little crack. Yeah. Did that little quick flash thing. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Yeah, she looked good. And then the funny scene with the Emma Roberts and her and the boy, that was hilarious. <laughs> God. <laughs> How awkward. That was that? Lucky ass guy. <laughs> yeah, what a, what a prick. <laughs> it's like his third movie and he's getting to do that. Yeah, I know, probably. right? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. If you guys haven't seen that, um, it's it's pretty new. It's still in the theaters. Go check yeah. it out. It's, a, it's, it's worth really a watch. Really funny, though. I don't generally like to watch. Um, comedies in the theater because typically you miss you know a crap yeah, ton of the laugh, I mean. humor yeah yeah people laugh and just uh, up, but... i think it's funniest movie i've seen since horrible bosses ironically enough since that did have aniston and sudeikis in it uh although they don't have any scenes really in that movie yeah. together they, it was cool to see their actual chemistry they're actually a they, pretty good they team. actually worked really good yeah, together i thought they had team. a lot of chemistry yeah. yeah i was pretty impressed by that i and, kind of hadn't really seen sudeikis have too much chemistry on screen with anybody but um it worked for him this time yeah and emma roberts i She's a pretty girl. She's a lot prettier than her aunt ever was in my book. Yeah, I agree. But uh, I think she's got a future. She's she's a really believable actress. Yeah, I think she did a good job. And it was weird seeing her cuss because I've only ever seen her in like kid movies and stuff, so it was kind of strange. Oh, yeah. But Nancy Drew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that Catherine Hahn lady is hilarious. If you don't know who she is, she's a uh, God. She's the new uh, character actor comedian, DeForce or whatever, <laughs> Tour de Force or whatever I'm trying to say. I mean, Step Brothers freaking uh wanderlust this uh everything i mean she's just popping up everywhere absolutely yep. hilarious i remember her from uh crossing jordan back in the day wow. she was on a tv show i don't remember that yeah okay. it was not a good tv show but i had to watch was, it because my wife it, watched was it was it a comedy no it was so like a, she it found was out like, that she could do comedy because she's great in it yeah it was it was a procedural you know um medical examiner tv oh, show okay. it was one of those really highly unbelievable tv shows where it's like i'm a medical examiner but yet I go out and I solve the medical crime. I go out and uh-huh. actually do the detective work and solve the crime. Like and bones. Yeah, it's like, really? Yeah. You know, no, you stay in the freaking thing and you just look at the bodies and that's <laughs> well, it. You don't Quincy do any of that did that. Yeah, he I was know. a coroner and he was out to... bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> TV's a bunch solve. of bullshit. None of that stuff. Yeah. CSI. My mom worked as a CSI in a police department or she, she at least worked as a, I don't think she was a CSI, but she worked uh, as the one that did the filing for the mm-hmm. CSIs in uh, Carrollton Police Department. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, that shows a bunch of crap because those guys, they go out, they don't have this like cool trucks and these big mm-hmm. old, you know, Humvees and stuff going out there with these super techno things and scan and spray and stuff. And she's like, they have a tackle box. Yeah. <laughs> you know? They right. have a tackle box they open. They have a couple things in there. They got to wait like a month to get any kind of prints back. It's not, right. it's not like the shows at all. I know. And every show is like this. Yeah. Every show has like this technology that's like out there. It's like Minority Report technology. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, but what I'm saying is like every show that's on TV that's a drama is a freaking crime. Oh yeah, crime show, and are, they're all getting it wrong. But yet people are watching it. It's the fantasy side of it. People like so. to you know be like in that it. world. But I give it credit. It's still better than a reality show. Oh yeah, yeah. But well, I, I, I you prefer, know I can't I take. Yeah. I can't take reality shows. I, any kind of reality, like you know, Duck Dynasty, all that crap. I'm not going to watch that. I'll watch Wipeout because it's funny. People get hurt. Yeah. That's okay. But, I'll watch um, Wipeout. I'll watch Pawn Stars because you can learn some stuff on Pawn Stars. I don't even watch that, man. I can't. But uh, like Storage Wars drives me crazy. Yeah. Oh, Never... my buddy Pop's going to be on Storage Wars Texas. Did I tell you about that? Oh, yeah? Yeah, I heard They've about that. They've already filmed yeah. it. It's uh, the new season. So that'll be fun. Is it actually a different show? It's Storage Wars Texas? Yeah, they have a Storage Wars oh, Texas. Oh, really? Also. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. And I think now they've got one in New York. They're kind of doing like the CSI franchise. <laughs> they're moving from their cities and all kinds. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they got too many shows about. But yeah, Wipeout and uh, Pawn Stars only two reality shows I watch. Yeah, and, and only Wipeout I watch religiously because, like you said, it's funny. People get hurt. Yeah, and Joe Wagner's on it. My buddy, my buddy Joe Wagner's on it. <laughs> Your buddy, <laughs> stalker. <laughs> hey, she replied to me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Her people replied to you. <laughs> no, it's her. It's her. Okay, yeah. She's she's one of the famous ones that does her own stuff. Yeah. She's not that big. No, she's not. I mean, she's on She's picking it up. I mean, yeah. But, you know, but yeah. Dude, you got to see the picture she posted last night. I have to show it to you. Oh, Holy yeah. Holy crap. She's in Hawaii on vacation. Yeah. On Twitter? Yeah. Oh, I'll look at on it. Beach. I'll on check the it beach. out. Dang it. I can't light my cigar and I, I talked too much. You always do that. Yeah, well. 
It is a talk show. It is a talk show. Oh, here's my lighter. Here you go. Okay, thank you. Yep, I like this cigar though, man. I mean, I it's a, I it's milder it. than I would smoke, but it's uh, it's definitely I would gone. Smoke, I would smoke again. It's gone to medium now, though. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it's mild at this point. It's definitely medium. In the last third, medium all the way. Yeah, I would. Uh, I'll talk in the mic now. Okay. I will uh, definitely smoke another one. Yep. That's yeah, good stuff. Actually, this Still. is. I guess we're getting to the last third, so we probably should take a yep. break. Just so do getting that. To that last third. Yep. Well, you know, I don't know. I don't want to take a break yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. We're not contractually bound to take a break. Yeah, actually, we kind of are. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you think about it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to take a little break here, and we'll have a word from our sponsor, who is Esteban Carreras, and then we'll be back for the uh, last third of the Placencia Reserva Organic. <laughs> Car 55, this is Dispatch. We have a 211 in progress in your area. Please respond. Dispatch, this is Car 55. We are in the vicinity and on our way. Did you say this was a 211? Yes, 211 robbery in progress. Mmm, 211. That reminds me of that great cigar by Esteban Carreras, the 211. Man, I could go for one of those right now. Uh, okay, whatever. We have a farmer in the area whose goats are getting stolen. And this is where it gets weird, saying it's a chupacabra. A chupacabra? Are you kidding me? Man, that's another great cigar by Esteban Carreras. Whoa, hold on now. Let's keep our focus here. I mean, this guy called in a 187 on his prize-winning goat, Mary. 187? You're killing me here. Yet another great cigar by Esteban Carreras. I just think this guy sounds crazy. Yeah, you might just want to call in a 5150 and call it a day. You know what I mean? 5150. That's it. You call a paddy wagon. I'm turning around and going to the Calypso Cigar Shop in Richardson for an Esteban Carreras cigar. Hey, that sounds great. Can I join you? Absolutely. Esteban Carreras Cigars. It'd be a crime not to smoke them. Hey everybody, it's Brandon Luna from Calypso Cigar Review reminding you to check out our buddies over at blindmanspuff.com. A great group of guys out there doing blind, honest cigar reviews. Who would have thunk? Anyway, those guys are running a great contest right now where you can win a whole box of 25 cedar spills to light your cigars with. Free of butane and sulfur and all those chemicals, it's the classy way to light your cigars. So go in and enter their contest, check it out, and you got until September 14th, 2013 to get your entries in, so go do it now over at blindmanspuff.com. We're back for the last third of the Placencia Reserva Organica. Organica. I just had a funny thought. We should do that fake laughter thing. Like when oh, you, you when, know, you, when you play in? Yeah, when I play in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're uh, back. Yeah, right. Like shows do. Like yeah. uh, early morning AM yeah, shows. Like, oh, that was so funny. We're not going to tell you. Yeah. yeah, no. We don't do that. We laugh. We're not fake. <laughs> we're anything but fake here. So have you seen any other movies recently? You said you had one, but uh, I did. So I talk went, about that I, one, and then I'll yeah. See I went I to I went to see the the last movie in the Cornetto trilogy, The uh, World's End, which is the oh, yeah. third movie yep. in the oh, Shaun yeah, of the yeah. Dead How Hot Fuzz. Yeah. It was great. Or is it rank among those three? I, I to me, it's still Shaun of the Dead's number one, Hot Fuzz is number two, and then right. World's End's number three. Okay. And I have a reason for that because okay. World's End is basically Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz stuck together. Okay, makes sense. So okay, it's like. Pieces, parts of the plot of the first one, and pieces, parts of the... It's like mm-hmm. elements of the first and the second movie stuck mm-hmm. together to make a third movie. But it still worked. It was still really funny. Shaun of the Dead is... That's a top that's a top 20 comedy for me. I, I, I loved Shaun of the Dead. Hot Fuzz I liked a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't love it. And if I never see it again, I'm okay, but I probably will see it again. But I'll, I'll probably, hopefully, watch Shaun of the Dead another 10, 20 times before... Yeah, Shaun of the Dead's you know. a stop-down for me. We talk about stop-down movies, and mm-hmm. that's one that if it's on... Um, or if I put it on, <laughs> yeah, I put the Blu-ray on. I'll sit yeah. and watch the whole movie. Oh yeah, because it's a it's a funny movie. I like it a lot, and it's so, a, so, one of the first. I mean, one of the first real successful attempts at a at a rom. They call it a rom com. Zom com. Zom com. Zom com. Yep. And uh, there's only been a couple of other ones that I thought worked. I thought uh, Fido was funny. Fido was good. I like Return uh, of the Living Dead was really the first one, and right. that has a special place in my yeah. heart. But it, it's not a great movie, but uh, it's still funny. And there's a lot. Zombie Land I thought was funny. Yeah, Zombie Land was good. Yeah, you know, it's a little more. Mainstream, but it was still very it had, fun. It had its, yeah, it had its funny points. Have One I of the best the cameos for yeah. yeah. I mentioned the story about Garland here to, to our listeners. No, I don't think if so. You people have, I know we've talked about it off mic, but if you people have watched Zombieland, and uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Zombieland, 
At the beginning, when uh, Michael Sarah is a... Uh, it's not Michael I know, it's, it's that guy that always get confused with Michael Sarah. <laughs> the uh, other guy that sounds like he hasn't hit puberty yet. Yeah. That guy. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg not or whatever. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. I know, the but he played Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he's a... Uh, it's the first scene where we see him, and he's he says, uh, I'm in Garland, Texas. It may look like it's been overrun by zombies, but no, that is just Garland. And Which is so funny, because they didn't even film this movie in Texas. Why did the writer pick Garland to kick him right in the nuts? And for those who don't know, Garland is a neighboring city of Richardson. I actually live in Garland, so and I don't like Garland, so I, it cracked me up. It made me laugh to have that line in that movie. Jesse Eisenberg is his That's name. That's it. Yeah. I knew it had... Berg in it somewhere. Yeah. Eisenberg. Yep. Jesse Eisenberg. Yep. Big Brown was Jim a, was in it, wasn't big it? Big Brown Jim was in <laughs> was in Zombieland. He was the big fat zombie in Zombieland. <laughs> big Brown Jim. I'm never gonna let you forget that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think his name was Big Black Mike or something like that. I don't know. Was it? I don't know, I have to look it up. Well Big but. Black Mike's different. Big Brown Jim. <laughs> <laughs> really? Is Big Black Mike different? Are you really gonna say it's well, different? Oh yeah. Cause <laughs> big Black Mike. There are, I mean you know, that just sounds like a name for his dick. Big, <laughs> Brown, big, Brown, <laughs> big Black Mike. That's what I call it. Big Brown Jim just sounds like you had a nice bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> I just dropped off a Big, a Brown, big Brown Jim, Jim man. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of leaving a couple of kids at the pool or whatever they used to say. <laughs> Let's see if this thing shows the comments. We'll see if I can get this guy's name here. Yeah. Because uh, we owe shout outs to Jeff. Uh huh. Jeff Hershower. Who Hershauer. gave us some really great shout outs actually. He did he did. That was that one actually yeah, it was a feel good moment. I was just scanning through my Tim Black too. I was totally off. <laughs> was the you guy who were, was, I don't know where the, the hell same, Big Brown Jim came from. You weren't even in the same galaxy. <laughs> Tim Black too. <laughs> Uh, called me on the spelling of La Paulina because I spelled it Paulina. Paulina. So I fixed it. Sorry. Yeah. I'm a dumbass. Um, but yeah, poolside reviews. Uh, he he saw my point about the asparagus pee. So um. and I had heard of it too. I just was <laughs> kicking the balls that day. And apparently, I need to try these multivitamins that turn your pee into Shrek pee. Shrek pee. That was <laughs> a funny line. Pee. That was a funny line for Kurt. <laughs> and uh, he promised us he's going to review. He's one of the guys we bombed. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, is going to review at least one. Of the Ezra Zions and one of the Esteban Carreras. So cool. Look forward to those reviews. Yeah, look forward to those. They need a little time to acclimate, so don't review them too soon. Kurt. Uh, he should be good now. They're, they've they've aged in that humidor for a year. Those yeah. things have been in the humidor for a year. They're fine. Well, not the Ezras, though. Well, no, not the Ezras, but they're they're fine. Yeah. He's had them almost two weeks now, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so there's uh, your hint, Kirk. Get on the reviews, buddy boy. <laughs> Yep, so Jeff Hershauer gave us a shout-out on uh, Facebook. It was a really nice one. He gave us a great compliment in that it's like sitting in a cigar bar and hanging out with some dudes, which is what we try to strive for. Absolutely. And um, <clears throat> But the I funny thing said, about it was it was just a random post that he put. Yeah. And it was a status update where he said, uh, I've grabbed my cigar, and I'm going to go listen to the Calypso Cigar Review. Huh? And that's kind of cool when you're reading that, and you're like, oh, yeah. that's cool. Makes you feel good. Like yeah. We're doing this for someone just other than ourselves, which right. is great. You know? Yeah, so thanks, probably Jeff. Got, I know we've got a good amount of listeners. We're not you know, to the space where... We, I want to be like. Right. I think once we get a hundred episodes in, we'll have you know yeah. a better following. Well, it seems like our YouTube subscribers go up every day or every other day. Yeah, uh, you know that's great. And boy, we had a great download week on Podomatic last week. Mm -hmm. We had like a two day stretch of just the numbers were like three and four times what they usually are. Yep. And Chile is back. Yep, correct. They uh, are. The UK is starting to come along. Yeah, they're coming along. They're getting there. And Japan and China, for some reason, were big there. Yep. Venezuela, we had a lot in Venezuela. Did you see that? Uh-huh. Well, did. a lot. It was like 11 that one day, but that's still weird for Venezuela to have 11 downloads of our show. Hey. We're worldwide, baby. Worldwide web, babe. Yep. Gotta love it. But yeah, I mean, we do this for you guys. We do it for us because we like to sit here and chat and BS, and it was just a, a way this for us what to we get do the anyway, word out. Yeah. So. <laughs> Might as well record it and send it out there. And uh, we love smoking cigars, so we're just sharing that with you guys, and that's what we like to do, so... And we hope you smoke the cigars we smoke and smoke yep. them with us. And, you know, that's the great thing about podcasts is you can always, you know, if you missed an episode or you missed five or six episodes, yeah, go, back, go back, look at what we reviewed, go grab it and mm -hmm. smoke it while you're listening. Yep. And if you'll follow us on Twitter, I haven't been as religious about it the last few days, and I apologize, but uh, I post our new our new shows. Mm -hmm. And then on the days where obviously we don't have a show, I go back and post what I call classic Calypso podcasts. So that way you can find them on uh, Twitter as well. Mm hmm so follow us on Twitter, and we'd appreciate it. Yep. I'm going to do a shout-out to myself here, too. And if you go to the, uh, if you go to our page, which is uh, actually Meat Cake 1 on YouTube, we have all the Calypso Cigar Reviews, but I also have my Cigar Bombs, where I mm -hmm. 
bomb people and uh, brandy's on a couple of I've those been a guest star and cigar blitz as well which is just like a short five minute cigar review which i'll probably be doing less of those now since i don't have a lot of cigars but <laughs> still, <laughs> i'll still do them when i can yeah so um but yeah you know it's a it's a great way to get the word out let people know about cigars they haven't tried and uh, we try and do cigars that aren't everyday cigars that you know yeah exactly so they're i mean we will do a, we will do a league of number nine sometime you know? yeah we'll get there eventually uh, We've never done the Tempest. I mean, people know we like the Tempest, but we could maybe do an episode where we tell people why we like the Tempest while yeah. we're smoking. Uh, but uh, for the most part, we stick with the boutiques. I know we we have done a crap load of Altidus, mm -hmm. but Altidus has been on a good run lately. Yeah. I mean, the last year or so, they put out some really good cigars, so we felt obliged to tell you guys about them. So what was the movie you saw? Because I said I saw World's End and I liked it. What did you see? Yeah, and your movie did not Remind trigger. you what you watch? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? It was... Um, Doggone it. Comedy, action, yep, drama. It was a comedy. It was a comedy? Older comedy? Newer comedy? Uh, was it Burt Wonderstone? Was it? Yes. Did you it see that? It was Burt Wonderstone. Oh, I heard I that was pretty horrible. It's pretty funny. Is People it really? People just don't know what the heck they're talking about. It mm. was pretty darn funny. Okay. And uh, not the kind of funny I usually like, but it was really good. I mean, Carell's awesome in it. Mm. Uh, Jim Carrey's funny in his parts. and But, you know, for whatever reason, people just didn't like this movie, but I thought it was hilarious. You know, I thought Dinner for Smucks was great, and people thought that was bad. I, I like Dinner for Smucks, yeah. I Dinner thought that Smucks was hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. Just the scenes with the Galifianakis and, and uh, Pharrell, uh, Pharrell playing off each other is oh, classic, genius, man. Genius. That yeah. whole scene at the... The dinner oh, party, just, the dinner party alone. If you don't even watch the movie of Dinner for Smucks, just watch, Smucks, that just watch the dinner party. It's God. awesome. Yeah, the, the mind tricks and stuff. Oh, man. God. Classic stuff. Uh -huh. So funny. You know, and I'm a huge Paul Rudd fan. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't even funny in that, but he was the put upon guy. He was he didn't get to be funny much in that movie, but he was yeah, he was great. a straight man for he sure. He was great as a straight man. Yep. He does a good job though. I mean he's he's come that's a guy who's come back from obscurity and really just kind of He is awesome. Wrangled a career. Paul Rudd is one of the best talents in Hollywood, I think. I saw a movie with uh, him and Michelle Pfeiffer that I'd never heard of. It's I called, love that movie. I I will never be your woman or I can yeah, never be your woman. I can never be your man or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Woman. No. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's older, or he's older, she's older than him, and he falls in love with her. And yeah, it's typical romantic comedy, but his talent level, and he sings and dances in it, and the dude's just a talented guy. Yep, he is. And that's one of those movies that was um, kind of just, uh, it was supposed to come out, it got shelved for a bunch of years, mm -hmm. went straight to video, and uh, kind of did okay on I think 40 year old video. Virgin came out, and yeah. Red got popular again, and... Yeah, but if you haven't seen that movie, it's it's a good, it's a romantic comedy. It's a date movie, but it's got a weird mystical element to it, which I think probably it didn't need. Yeah, per se, but but it, it was, was there. Yeah. yeah, as a single heterosexual dude, I did not feel embarrassed sitting there watching it by myself. I thought it was a great movie. I enjoyed the heck yeah, out of it. And it was interesting because he plays basically the uh, kind of character that he played back in the '80s. You know, yeah. when he was doing the Clueless movie and stuff. Right. He plays, and it's Stacey Dash is in it from Clueless. Right. It's like they're making the Clueless TV show. It's right. weird. It's kind of a weird. Paradise. And like I could see paradox. why it didn't work at the theater. I could. Ha yeah. I, I don't know how they would have marketed it, marketed it, mm. to uh, to get it successful. But it was a great direct video, and I, I think it's a good movie. Yeah, but that's uh, fun. Yeah, it's a fun flick. Yeah, I could see you, you and your wife watching that together. Yeah, she liked it a lot. She actually uh, she ended up watching it like three times in a week because she kept telling friends about it. Come over and watch this movie. I'm like, oh no, oh, crap, it's on again. First time I was like, cool, it's a good movie. The second time I'm like, yeah, okay, it's funny. The third time I'm like, oh, just part of this movie. Watch something else. But you know. <laughs> It's nice that she grabbed onto yeah. it and liked it because I it was I didn't mind seeing it again. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Here's a movie we've never talked about: Tucker and Dave versus Evil. Mm. One of the funniest movies you will ever see. Yeah, and that's that that happened to me, and I didn't mind. Mm. I told a buddy about it. I watched it. Told a buddy about it. So I watched it with him, and then he he wanted his wife to see it. So I watched it with him and his wife. So I saw that three times in a week. You know. Still held up. It yeah, that's a great movie. Matter of fact, I was picking up new things I'd missed the first time. Yeah, that's a really it's a it's a unique horror film in that it's mm -hmm. turned, kind of told from a reverse. Yeah, it, you got to see it. I don't want to give away too yeah. much, but check out Tucker and Dave versus Evil. It's and uh, I don't remember who who plays who or whatever, but uh, the one guy, Steve the Pirate from Dodgeball, was Steve the Pirate from Dodgeball. Yep. I'd forgotten about that. Yep. And the other guy was on a TV show that I used to watch that people didn't really like either. Um, that I, I thought the show was funny. It was produced by Kevin Smith, uh, and it was um, crap. I can't think of the stalker. name of the show. Hmm? You're a Kevin Smith stalker. Yeah. And an Aisha Tyler stalker. Yeah, I just listened to their podcast. Oh, that's stalking, isn't it? That's not stalking. I oh, listened okay. to their podcast. Okay, it's not stalking. 
Um, Darn, so that means we don't have stalkers? No, we don't have stalkers. Damn. What was that damn show called? It was a cool show. Reaper. Do you ever see Reaper? I saw an episode of it. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't bad. Yeah, but it's got the same guy from that. Uh, he played a character named Sock. Uh-huh. And um, it's uh, got... Uh, it, it, it's a funny show. It didn't. I think it only lasted you know, 31 episodes. It got, what, three seasons? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it got bad near the end. But it's got um, uh, Tom, Thomas Ian, Ian Michael. Michael Ian Black. Okay. Michael Ian Black's in it. He's hilarious. Um, Big Brown Jim. Big brown gems in it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the real cute blonde that was in Tucker and Dave? She's getting big. She's landing in a lot of parts. Let me see here. Hold on. I'm on the old IMDb page here. Just give me a second. I gotta find. Tucker. She's really cute. She is. Yeah. Oh, Tucker. The guy from Tucker and Dave was in Monsters University. Oh, was he? Yep. Uh, where's Tucker and Dave? Dale. Tucker and Dale fight. Evil. Traitors Joe. Traitors Joe. Shut up. <laughs> this is a segment where I call back all of Brandon's fuck ups. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so his name is Tyler Labine, and the other guy's name is Alan Tudyk. Okay. And the girl's name is Katerina Bowden. That's it. Yep. Yep. And she is a cutie. Very cute, and she's showing up in a lot of things. Oh, she's on that TV show. Uh, she's on 30 Rock. Oh, she was on 30 Rock? Yeah, she was a regular on 30 Rock. Oh, okay. She was the cute receptionist chick that was Oh, like, that's right. Ditsy, yeah. You know, that's a show that should have been right up my alley, mm-hmm. and I didn't like it. I, I love tried that show. I tried the first two episodes and was done. You know who ruined it for me is Tracy Morgan. I don't think Tracy Morgan's funny. Yeah, but I, I, that show's hilarious, dude. I think you got to get past that and try and give it a try because it's, it's got a lot well, of really I, funny moments. I don't like Alec Baldwin, but I like him in comedy. Yeah. And so I know I should like that show. But Where are you I, at on your... I'm almost yet. done. Yeah. Because I had the corona. Yeah, we were pretty it much It did at the pick end up a third. lot, I thought, at the end. That last third had a... This, crap load of flavor yeah this last third has a ton of flavor um it's definitely got um for me i'm picking up a little nuttiness on it um slightly through the retro hail uh it's got some spice to it and uh it's definitely medium at this point yeah. it starts off very mild moves into a medium and kind of stays there through the last third but uh certainly not one note no, whoever no. says it's one note doesn't know what one note means i think yep it's I think definitely they... got a, got more than one note mm-hmm it's not a symphony by chance, but no, by any, any stretch of the imagination, but it is a, more than one note. But I will definitely smoke another one of these. Yeah, I dug it. I think it's yummy. And we are about to the end of the um, Placencia Reserva, Reserva Organica. Organica. So that's going to round. That's going to pretty much end it for us here. So uh, as always, check us out on Podomatic, Spreaker, um, iTunes. You want to subscribe there and give us a review if you can, please, and give us five stars. Help us uh, new listeners find us. And as always, add us on the old Facebook at Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge, and check us out on Twitter because we're there too. Calypso Cigar Review on Twitter. Yep. So as always, listen, listen, listen. We love you guys listening, and um, we will give you a shout out if you listen. And as always, as always, it's been great smoking with you. See you later, Brandon. See ya, Randy. Dick. <laughs> big brown gem. Big, big brown gem. <laughs> big brown gem. Big brown gem. Big brown. Oh, this gem. is where we do the fake laughter. <laughs> <laughs>